This is the story of a man named Barry Kazrazadi. He was somebody who was very dear to me. He was my best friend, my role model, my hero, and my dad. My dad was born on March 8, 1959, in a small town called Hamadan in the country of Iran. He lived there until he was about 18, until the Iranian revolution started, and his options were to either get an education out of the country or to fight in a war he didn't believe in. So naturally, he applied to every college he could. Barry was offered admission to the University of Florida, but the summer before he was supposed to leave, he broke his leg in a car accident, and his doctor told him he wasn't going to be able to fly with a cast on his leg. But he had this crazy idea to gather a bunch of his friends and get some butter knives and cut off his cast. And so he literally came to this country with a broken leg, barely knowing the language we all spoke. But he was determined to come here. It wasn't until he met a very special lady named Susan Tate that he finally began integrating to our culture. She taught him that it's not okay to do things like wear cheetah print speedos at the beach and that open-toed shoes were just not allowed for men. But eventually he asked her if she wanted to go disco dancing and she said yes and their relationship took off from there fast forward a couple years and may 26th 1984 barry and susan got married my dad used to always talk about how important family was to him he used to always let each one of us know how much he cared about us and how much he loved us. He would have done anything for us, and I genuinely believe that. I always loved spending time with my dad, especially towards my adult years. We got very close, and he always knew how to make me laugh and how to put me in a good mood. It wasn't until we took a trip to Chicago to visit my brother, Dr. Dave, that I started to notice something was wrong with him. His back was killing him and he didn't have the energy for anything, and that was just so unlike him. He was the strongest person I knew, and he didn't even want to go out with us. Months later, January 2015, my dad's back pain got too bad for him to handle. And so he went into the emergency room and got a CAT scan, and it showed that he had four lesions along his spine. He got a biopsy, and after a couple of days of praying, we found out that those lesions were malignant liposarcoma. After a failed experimental study, he started his first round of chemotherapy, and he started to notice his hair was falling out, which meant he lost his magnificent mustache. And he went on ahead and shaved his head. And he hated the way it looked. So I offered to let him shave my head. And he accepted. And I'm very happy I did that. My brother David described his cancer as a lock and all the different kinds of treatments as a ring of keys. It was just a matter of finding the right key. But unfortunately, we were never able to find that key. The last words I ever heard my dad say were to my mom, and 
he said, Susan, can we please go to bed now? I sat in his room and I held his hand until his final breath. My dad passed away on October 3rd, 2015. I would give anything just to get to talk to him one more time. He was the best man I ever knew. And I'm not quite sure how to deal with losing him. Lord, it's hard to be here. It's hard to let go. It's hard to say goodbye. Lord, we don't want to do these things, and yet we have no other choice. Please walk with us. Please weep with us. And then please dry our tears. And let us feel, let us see, let us sense your love and your compassion. Even now, even here, even in our pain. Amen. Amen. My dad was so much more than just somebody who got an illness and passed away. This is the story of his legacy. This is a celebration of his actual life. Because he was the strongest man I ever knew. It's up to me and my brothers to carry on his great legacy and to do everything we can to make sure he's proud in the afterlife.